Hi, good morning. We're at the Winter Star News Cafe. I'm Don McCarthy with Dylan Christie and our special guest, Ward 2 candidate, uh, John Elliott. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Okay, uh, John, uh, he was out on the campaign trail the other day talking about uh, the blighted homes uh, in the city's west end. Uh, John, talk about that problem. Yeah, so we, we want to raise that issue and awareness in our community, around the city. You know, we want to wake up some, some of the uh, people that are involved in it. You know, um, we've been living like that for, it's going into 10 years now. So, you know, it's time we have to sit down and, and look at some resolve one way or another. Okay, now the issue, right, is uh, homes owned by the Ambassador Bridge that have been bought and left to rot. Just, just yes, talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so there's, there's homes that are um, in the uh, designated area, uh, the heritage homes, that they've cordoned off, the city has cordoned off and say, okay, this is a, a heritage designation. None of these houses can touch, be, cut, be torn down. But then there's also, you know, bridge company homes that are outside that heritage designation, designation too that are also boarded up. And you know, basically just rot. So, you know, it's 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 sort of a a, a mix mismatch of you know heritage designation houses being tr being protected, and and non heritage um, properties that are still boarded up that aren't being protected that are you know um, ready to come down. Okay. Let's say just in yeah. terms of quality of life, uh, just off camera, you were talking about this rats yeah. and skunks and and. Like, you know, for me, I drive by it every day. Yeah. But you guys in the West End, you live right in the middle of this. Right Describe what that's like. Well, I live, I live within walking distance from some of the houses within five minutes. Another direction, I live within 10 minutes. I work right across the street from some of it as I run the Sandwich Teen Action Group. Yeah, and it's, you know, my street, I have to admit, my street where I live is immaculate. But I have close friends that live right beside these boarded up houses. And, you know, you can imagine living besides something like that going on 10 years and there's no end in sight or no one's raising the issue about it and no one's talking about it. So it's frustrating, you know, it's frustrating. And it's more than just an eyesore too, right? There, um, I know Windsor Fire, uh, it's hard to know if what the, what the structure's like, if it's intact. Uh, there's squatters that sometimes go in there. Can you kind of talk to that? Uh, what are yeah. some of the other issues and, and that, that kind of come up as a result of having these homes that board that, up? That's the main issue that I was on on the campaign trail raising is the, the, the total health and safety issue because it is it's a health and safety and I know I was reading the article yesterday and some of the students that go to the university from out of town were talking about you know how creepy it was to walk by there yeah. you know at night when they're going to class they make sure they walk in groups and you know that's a that's a health and safety right there now the the breeding varmints you know and I, I heard tell that you go down there and broad daylight skunk families are just walking around like they own the neighborhood um, you know, there's everything, raccoons, rats, you know, they talk about the rat problem. Go down there in the evening and, and see what it looks like down there. So, you know, and, and it goes back to people living next door to it. Okay. Um, now, you know, there was a little back and forth in the paper, of course. Uh, you know, the city won't let the Ambassador Bridge tear down those homes because they fear the Ambassador Bridge is, is going to pave it over and put a, a truck plaza there. The Ambassador Bridge, for their part, says, oh, well, you know, we'll put green space, and but the city never believes them. But you sort of split the blame 50-50. Yeah, it's 50-50. And, and yes, because both of the, both of the, uh, the entities, let's say the city and the bridge, when this whole issue started, you know, uh, back in, I want to say eight, nine years ago, when, you know, the bridge company started buying up the properties, you know, and, and the, city, the city entered into the, uh, the fray of all of it, um, you know, they're, they're just, it's just a stalemate. You know, it's a stalemate. The bridge company did some things that weren't right. The city did some things that weren't right. And now both of them have their backs up, blaming each other, you know, whose fault it is. But at the end of the day, there's still a community that lives there that's not being, you know, that's not being fairly done by. Because why should our community continue to have to live like that? Because two powerhouses, you know, got their backs up and they don't want to come to a compromisable agreement. So what, I guess is it, is it picking the lesser of two evils then? Uh, sh would you like to see the city actually go ahead and let the bridge tear down these homes and put up a green space at the risk of it becoming a truck plaza one day? Or no, what, what needs what to be I, done? What I propose, what I'm proposed is that the, the um, environmental assessment mm -hmm. uh, for health and safety, I didn't say study. Now I know I was misquoted with some of those comments in the paper and they said, you know, uh, last thing those people need, I'm one of those people that live there. Um, is another study. I'm not proposing the study. I said environmental assessment to look at the health and safety issues of, of what that boarded up houses 
has impacted our community now and in the future. And we want to look at those issues for everything, like everything from, you know, um, businesses not wanting to move into the community, um, people that live there, their property values have gone down to the point where, you know, they, they, they'd have to give away their homes to get out of there, but yet their property taxes keep going up. I don't know whose fault that is, but that, that's an issue on mm -hmm. the table there. And, um, you know, the most frustrating part for me as, as, a, as a resident there for many years is now that stigma is being reattached, I said this, is being reattached to our community that it's a bad community to live in. And that's not fair. We've done a lot of work. You know, our organization, myself, other service agencies, we've done tremendous work over the past 30 years to make it a great community, and it is. It looks bad, but not because of the fault of us. You know what I mean? But in talking to people, that's the first impression they get. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> you don't want to move to the West End. It's that bad. Look at the way it looks, you know? And I expanded further on that, and I was saying corridors. You know, I, I listened to city council, and I've sat there many times, and they talk about corridors coming into the city, and how our corridors should look, and what our presentation should be. Well, if you go down to that community, each corridor looks horrible coming in. You don't want to come in. If that's what corridors look like, you don't want to come into our city. Mm -hmm. So that's not fair once again. Whose fault is that? 50-50, that's the way I put it. Like, okay. I'm, not, I'm okay. not siding with either one. I'm not gonna side with either one because I've been in, in enough of the meetings and, and some, of the, some of the talk to understand. It's a 50-50 it's a deal. Yeah. So. Okay, John, you ran in 2010 uh, and oh so close. Uh, Ron Jones beat you in the recount uh, by five votes. Um, how hard was that uh, to take? And you know, did you learn anything from campaigning uh, last night? Yeah, I, I had those, uh, what I tell people, those three vote nightmares. And after the rec recount, uh, you know, it was five votes. But you know what, after a while, when I, th I thought through it a lot, I thought, you know what, Let's, let me take all the positive things that I learned from it. Because it was my first time running. And, and a couple of times I remember we were just kind of stumbling out there like, all right, what do we do next? You know, the, the one thing that we did have, we had a solid community resume which I still carry, I mean extensive. And I think that was one, that was the reason why so many people voted in favor of this basically unknown guy. I was probably unknown to a lot of the city, but in that community, I'm very well known. You know, and that's for, from my resume. But um, you know what, I took, uh, you learn from, your, you learn from uh, lessons, I took all the good lessons on um, what I learned from that last, last election. And man, I've been uh, applying them to this one and, and uh, I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good out there. Okay, uh, John, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, he's running in War Two. He's the executive director of the Sandwich Team uh, Action Group, and he wants to end West End Blake.